Hey, what's up? My name is Austin, and today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to pass a technical interview so you can secure the offer at a fame company. For the sake of this video, I will be referring to LeetCode because that's the website I personally use, but these tips should be applicable to any interview prep site you plan to use. So the first tip I want to share is, if you want to succeed at LeetCode, is you have to have the right mindset. And I don't mean having fake confidence that you, know, you can solve any problem given to you. you know, that would just be delusional. But it's knowing that in reality, LeetCode is just like another game. And just like any game, you can improve at it over time and repetition. So sure, maybe right now easy LeetCode problems are difficult to solve, but you need to trust that this isn't going to last forever. That one day by being patient and putting in the work, you eventually will be able to solve these easy problems, which will give you the confidence to solve medium problems and then one day hard problems. Alright, so the second tip I have to share is having the right plan. Like I said earlier, LeetCode is something you can improve on, but how exactly how are you going to improve? Well first, you need to know the rules of these technical interviews for these fame companies. So what are the rules? Let's review them real quick. It's two questions 45 minutes, which means that there's a certain speed that I need to be able to solve these questions. You know, it's going to be a medium level question, which means there's a certain difficulty level that I need to be comfortable with. Third, I also need to provide the most optimal solution with space and time complexity, which means I need to be familiar with data structures and specific algorithms. And also, you need to explain the process to another human being which means I need to be able to defend my solution to someone else. Second, you need to have a plan to just do as many problems as you can. Just like any skill such as an instrument, cooking, or playing a sport, the best way to get better isn't to read books or just watch people do it, but it's literally to just do it yourself because you realize where your weaknesses are and you'll know where to improve. You know, for me, what worked best for me was to take an hour at the day, at the end of the day, and do one question every day. Now, I would try my best to solve it, and I would take notes on any key concepts I would need to know in order to solve the problem. This kept me at a good rhythm and would reinforce concepts in my head and slowly build confidence. Now, you don't have to go at this pace, but make sure you develop a plan where you're consistently practicing. The third tip I have to share is to progress from easy questions to hard questions. Even though easy questions more than likely won't be on the interview, often on LeetCode they provide a lot of foundational knowledge, such as certain concepts, such as doing binary search or pre-order traversal of a tree. If something if you're just beginning, I would also recommend you go to solve questions topic by topic so you already have the algorithm in mind and what is needed to solve the problem. If you're able to master these algorithms, eventually you'll realize these same concepts will be baked into medium and hard questions. Also, when you have solved a lot of easy problems under your belt, you're just naturally going to have more confidence when attempting to solve these medium and hard problems. Now the fourth tip I have to share when trying to master lead code is that you should not try to memorize solutions but memorize and even better, understand patterns. Not only is it practically impossible anyways considering the number of questions on a lead code, you won't be able to build the proper background knowledge in order to solve a multitude of different problems. So one thing that helped me reinforce these patterns is literally handwriting certain patterns on a piece of paper. So if I felt a certain pattern could be potentially useful when solving a problem, I could immediately just recall it very quickly. Some examples of patterns I wrote down were like binary search, sliding window, and breadth for search on a tree. Knowing these patterns off the top of your head will also be the key to optimizing the space and time complexity of your solution. The fifth tip I have to share is to practice under pressure. One regret I have looking back when I was practicing for Lico is often just try the question, and after five minutes, if I couldn't get the answer, I would just give up and look for the solution, and would hope that once I read and understand the solution, I was set for that problem. However, this gave me a false sense of confidence that was quickly exposed when I went to an actual interview because at that point, I couldn't just look for a solution on the spot. So in order to succeed as quickly as possible, you need to simulate a testing environment as best as you can. You know, I can't explain why, but pressure is a real thing and it does truly affect us. But like I mentioned earlier, you can close that gap by practicing more under pressure. I would even go as far as just to apply to as many jobs as you can just to get that interview practice just to get familiar with that pressure. So this is what I would recommend. Set a timer for every 30 minutes for every question and really just force yourself to think through the problem every possible way. For me, even though this isn't legal during the actual interview, if I was still stuck, I found myself reviewing my notes would at least jumpstart my memory into potential approaches to solve a certain problem. If you still get stuck after 30 minutes, then by all means, go look at the solution because at then you'll be past the time limit anyway. But at least even with that struggle, you're getting valuable insights on what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses so you can focus on that in the future. I would also recommend not to use the debugger or print statements in the middle of your code, as this was something that I did during leak code. 
but in the real interview, you will most likely have the code on a blank text pad. So you won't be allowed to use these tools in the real interview. The sixth tip I have to share is you need to practice explaining your process. After all, it's not a coding test, it's an interview. So even before you start coding, you should already be prepared to talk about what is your approach to the problem. What data structures are you thinking about using? What pattern or algorithm will be best? Why is it better than this alternative? By sharing this with your interviewer, this demonstrates to your interviewer that you didn't just have the solution memorized, but you actually understood the process and what it takes to build good and efficient code. Also, not only do you have to be able to explain the code, but you need to be able to explain this time and space complexity as well. The last fact to share is to be a team player in the interview. Like I mentioned in the last point, this isn't a coding test, but it's an interview, so how you treat the interviewer is hugely important as well. After all, there's a chance that you'll be working with that person in the future, and the last thing a company wants to do is to hire someone who is painful to work with and arrogant, regardless of coding ability. If you show humility, show enthusiasm, and ask the right questions, the interviewer will more than likely be on your side and give you hints in the right direction. You know, the interview process is never a binary threshold, but in fact a decision that takes on factors more than just solving lead code. So you want to have as many things going for you in order to tilt the decision whether or not to hire you or not in your favor. So that's it. Hope these tips are helpful when you're prepping for your technical interviews. The process is long and definitely not very easy. You know, I've had a lot of failures personally, so I know failure is part of the process. But with enough perseverance and hard work, it is possible to land that job offer. All right, good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any additional suggestions or comments, feel free to comment here right below. And if you like content like this, I'd appreciate if you like and subscribe. And click here if you want to see more videos about my day-to-day -day life as a software engineer.